high-end robots, precision tools, high-end design, and supersized factories. This is what it takes to make a global car. Inside Out takes you on a journey from under the hood to ruling the world. This is the story of building big and building tough. The first Indian-built global SUV, the Mahindra XUV 500. every year. India is the world's fastest growing car market. Put back to back, that's enough cars to stretch from Mumbai to Paris. And one particular type of car has been climbing the charts. The sports utility vehicle or SUV. No surprises given the Indian roads and traffic. Indian consumers are buying bigger, better and tougher. Sports utility vehicles or SUVs were born in the USA. Consumer versions of military vehicles that date back as far as World War II. But it wasn't until 1984 when Jeep debuted with the Cherokee XJ that SUVs rumbled off dirt roads and on to city streets. With higher seating, a broader view of the road and four-wheel drive that could handle anything, the SUV brought the toughness of the country to the city streets. It didn't take long for major SUV brands to invade Indian cities. But despite their popularity, India had yet to make a world-class SUV of her own. In 2006, this changed. Now, one Indian company has risen to the challenge. Automotive manufacturer Mahindra will design and create an Indian-made SUV. But this will be no ordinary car. It has to measure up to any model anywhere. It needs to be able to take over the roads in India and beyond. It needs to be a truly global SUV. It will take five years to travel from designer to showroom and more and more with foreign cars flooding the market. Company president Dr. Pavan Goenka knows Mahindra is already behind. The Indian auto industry had a late start uh, and Mahindra therefore also had a late start and therefore we have a lot of catching up to do. The development of a car is in a sense managing the future. So you have to get yourself into a time machine and figure out what young people want. First, they had to find out what consumers want from an SUV. I always found myself, um, you know, not really happy driving in the roads of Mumbai. It was never easy. There are very uh, clear reasons why I prefer an SUV to a sedan. The sheer size of the vehicle, comfort levels are much higher. You know, I feel much more confident in it. I can maneuver the car much um, easier. People really respect you for the vehicle that you are in. I think I've been more or less an SUV person since the beginning. What I liked about uh, the SUV is people and luggage carrying capacity, butch looks, the fact that it's well built and it can take uh, all sorts of abuse, whether it is on road or off road. Of course, within the city, not many people would get in the way of an SUV, as would happen with smaller hatches. So uh, that is another uh, side effect, if you would call it. Knowing the Indian consumer's needs is primary. But Mahindra has to design a car that can take on the world. We have to take on tasks that the conventional wisdom will say is not doable, it's crazy, it doesn't make sense, and no sane companies would take that up. An Indian car maker has never designed and built a global SUV before. Mahindra aims to be the first. They have to make a car that will appeal to global customers. The design and styling team is where the journey begins. They start making sketches, anticipating future trends from younger buyers. 
if these people who are the future say that this completely does not fly, I don't see this as a global car in the future, then it's a no-go gauge. You, you drop the project and go back to the drawing board. Next, the team sets off on a world tour to find out what global consumers really want in an SUV. Before we truly start ideating uh, drawing cars, is we uh, draw up these uh, voice of customers on little post-its, paste them on walls, and just try and look and see patterns. We collected something like 1,700 voice of customers, and then we started synthesizing them into an image. What we call as a quality function deployment image. We convert voice of customers into images. It's a small step with an important message. The customer is king, but the car can't be far behind. As the team gathers the voice of customers, Mahindra sets up a high-end facility in Chennai, the Mahindra Research Valley. We literally came up with a laptop here. There was nothing. We have to set up a small office here, a small proto shed for building the uh, prototypes. And it was like ground up, you have to build everything. We know why we are here. Mm. We know that we have to develop a new product, XUV 500, for a global market. We were at the time not knowing how we will do it. And it was very interesting to start from scratch, looking at uh, opportunities to learn as well as start something fresh. Mahindra Research Valley starts small but grows quickly into a massive center for research and development of the new model, the XUV500. It will take years of engineering and simulations before they can begin to build a real car. Whenever you're creating something for the future, you always have to get in touch with customers or presumers, those who can predict the future. Mahindra Research Valley becomes a nerve center filled with technology and tools, all dedicated to their ambitious first project, the XUV500. From driving, safety, navigation, entertainment systems, the global SUV has to offer features that can compete with the best out there. It was very, very complex because, uh, as I said, we wanted a next generation product. XUV 500 was to be a global product and not just to be made for India. If you ask at that time whether XUV 500 would have been a success or where we are today, uh, definitely I wouldn't have had an answer. In Chennai, the work begins. Team members from styling, research and development, engineering design, manufacturing and marketing pour over feedback from hundreds of customers for months. So you can see this was majestic elegance and uh, looks should be uncommon and should stand out. What would the images be if we had to address this? The key words emerging from the feedback all send the same message. Masculine, aggressive, muscular, king of the road, unique. Exclusive, luxurious, eye-catching. Out of hundreds of surveys, there is one constant theme, power and control.
customer says he wants power. One way of me seeing it, he wants higher power of the engine. But actually, he means many things in the vehicle. The power in which the whole vehicle communicates externally when he goes in the car, the power in which he gets when he is inside the car, and, and the connotations goes into different things. In an SUV, you sit tall, you have a wider expanse in front of you, so the control you have got and the feeling of power you have got at your disposal. Everyone desires SUVs provided the price points are right. It's a question of dominance on the road. Now the team will have to wrestle raw power into real design. And it isn't going to be easy. The XUV500 has to look like it belonged everywhere. It had to be a world-class head-turner. The first Indian-built global SUV from car manufacturer Mahindra is well underway with a brand new R&D facility in Chennai and a world-class plant in the works. The Mahindra team has never attempted anything like this before. time that we decided on what product to make till the time that we launched the product and even beyond that, we always had these sort of apprehensions on whether we're doing the right thing, whether we're taking on too much, whether we have overconfidence in what we can achieve. Can we do a monocoque vehicle? We have never done this before and monocoque vehicle is very different than chassis-based vehicle. The XUV team has jumped into the deep end and it's going to be a steep learning curve. We were very clear that not only in style, but also in technology, what we uh, put into the product, it should be globally competitive. So like we came up with a plastic fuel tank, the monocoque structure came from uh, globally competitive SUVs of the future. Choosing a monocoque design is a critical step for the XUV500. It meant a lighter, more fuel efficient car with easier handling. Not just more bang for the buck for the consumer, but also a more pleasurable drive on the road. The team also chooses to use high tension steel to build the body of the car. A transverse east-west engine orientation under the hood. It's innovative, but it can also backfire, and there's no room for failure. One would say that these were really high-risk things to take up. We are in our virtual reality room where we are visualizing the vehicle. So this is a tool by which we can uh, visualize the car much before you see it in its form, uh, final form on the road. The most interesting aspect or the most exciting aspect is the initial visualizing, the dreaming and creating the form. And after that, I would say that 5%, 95%, the 5% is the inspiration, but the 95% is the sweat of trying to maintain that integrity. And uh, that's through the four years of the product development. The team has to keep the style intact, but it has to pass through engineering. The design team needs to build scale models using high precision cutting tools to create the shape and curves of the XUV500. Last 5-6% which you can't visualize with virtual models, this helps. So we make the shape and we say that this is the right proportion, that's the right balance. It includes the package, it has the engine. And then engineering takes it forward and uh, um, checks for various criteria. The engineers must approve every line and curve. 
to make sure that the design sent in can actually be made. That's when the challenges begin. The styling team has to go back to change the front overhang of the car. Finding common ground isn't easy. Argue with them about why does it have to be so. Look at some other benchmark product. See, that doesn't have so much overhang and it has to be balanced with the uh, wheelbase. Are you willing to change the wheelbase? So it's, uh, some of these discussions can get quite hot. More tense moments will follow. As work progresses on the design of the XUV500, the engineers must verify every detail. Time is running out. Their factory at Chakan, near Pune city, is about to go live. Mahindra has to step on the pedal, and they decide to step on it hard. The styling team is now sent on an unexpected trip, an unusual turn in this journey. The research has begun and visualization has started to take shape. Chairman Anand Mahindra decides the styling team needs to experience the most powerful aspects of their design all the way across the globe. I think it was about authenticity. I really felt that people needed to live, breathe, feel Africa before they really went into a design mode. I believe the world is going to have to give more leeway to designers. They will have to be flights of fancy. Today what is considered a flight of fancy I believe will be convention tomorrow. The styling team is sent to Masai Mara in Kenya. How do you describe the Masai Mara? It's just, it's overwhelming. It's the way the space changes. We saw the way the Masai Mara changed and we wanted this quality in the car in the sense of what you saw during the day was this car that you would take to work, but we wanted it to change aspect in the evening. So when the sun went down, it had to become this beast, this like really aggressive animal that you probably took to a discotheque. The new Mahindra Chakan factory is up and running. A massive greenfield facility. It is one of the most advanced plants in the world. Spread over 700 acres, this huge facility can move cars from press shop to body shop to paint to assembly as fast as any factory in the world. 77 tons of high tension steel are used every day in the press shop of the Jakan plant. Over a year, that would be as much as the amount used for the iconic Bandra Worli ceiling in Mumbai. 17 robots and nearly 3,000 employees, this state-of-the-art plant is capable of producing over 100,000 vehicles a year. I've never seen a plant of this size. It is unbelievable. With the factory operational, it's a high-speed race to the finish line. The team is feeling the pressure. So if you look at the enormity of task that we had, uh, it's not just that we're designing a new product. Uh, with a young team. Uh, we also were setting up an R&D center simultaneously and setting up a plant simultaneously. So if you add the three together, one would think that we are crazy. Uh, you'll never succeed uh, doing all of these things ground up. They cannot collapse. The pieces of the puzzle are coming together for the XUV team. They get the assembly line ready for action. First, the sheet metal is pressed into various body parts of the XUV500. These parts are transported to the body shop, where they're put together both manually and with robots, doing precision welding. The fully formed body then moves on to the paint shop, and then painted both manually and by robots. The painted body is sent to the trim chassis and finish shop, where everything from its tires and transmission to its upholstery cockpit to windshield wipers are fitted. After final testing, the car is ready to drive. But the team is still a long way from mass-producing road warriors. So it's not that um, somebody styles and then manufacturing guy says, I can't make it. 
So there is a lot of simulation process we do. Extensive computer simulations help the engineering team tackle the unusual contours of the XUV500. The team ensures that it will fit together perfectly. I have to make sure that all the panels are coming together properly. Uh, all the components are where they are supposed to be. They give this wholesome look of perfection. A flawless design is not easy to achieve. It requires the highest technology to support it. We have used a lot of computer-aided simulation tools to ensure that everything is uh, done, simulated very early in the program and we have less surprises when we go downstream into the program. Surprises lead to faults, something that the team ill afford. They can't change the cheetah-inspired design. Kripa and her team must figure out how to transform sheet metal into a streamlined beast. Form, there are very clear lines, there are a particular quality about the stance that's derived from the cheetah. So you have the pounds on the fenders, you have the haunch over the rear wheel arch, you have the muscle cut line on the belly. To reduce the mass on the metal mass on the body side, all these are the connects to the cheetah. The cheetah inspired design speaks to the customer's most important theme feel the power reflects both style and function. When the customer sits inside uh, the vehicle, the customer should transform. The customer should feel the power. So when you say feel the power, this theme is seen by every system team. For every department working on the XUV500, feel the power becomes their new mantra. The XUV500, we took care with every detail. The arrow in the tail lamp, which is pointing down to a very uh, unique and uh, impressive shoulder line. The shoulder line itself is the story of the car in the terms of the stance that it has, which relates to the cheetah. The XUV design is checked and rechecked virtually in Chennai. The whole team is fired up. They've tasted blood, and now they're ready for the kill. The XUV team has reached one of the most dramatic moments of the project, building the prototype. They assemble the prototype part by part. The dream is getting closer, but it's still so far away. Many different parts didn't fit well. It was almost like an ugly duckling. None of the young XUV team has ever built a car like this before. The prototype has to look as good as it drives. First impressions are everything. If it doesn't measure up, it could send them back to the drawing board. It was a very tense challenge. I think those days Whoever were there, 110 or 120 people will never forget those days in their life. After extensive simulations and virtual checks, the XUV prototypes are finally ready for inspection. The XUV team has chosen an innovation to make sure the design is contemporary. We are in the press shop. What you are hearing in the background is the stamping sound of XUV500 body side panel. The conventional method of forming body side panel is in two parts. But to get the high precision and quality that we wanted to give the styling look of Cheetah, we decided to go in for one piece body side panel. Choosing a single piece body side results in a lighter, more fuel efficient car. This gives the XUV an easy urban feel 
while retaining the ruggedness of an off-road. There's a long time from the time that you first conceive the product till the time it gets launched. Uh, four years, three and a half years, five years, you'll hear different numbers. Uh, and there are lots of moments of truth uh, that come during this process and that's when you say Eureka. After the first prototype was built, it was a very uh, important moment for all of us. Senior management came and they saw the vehicle. The Mahindra leadership has to approve. Tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, our president is supposed to come and unveil the body. 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, some other parts are fitting. People are doing whatever tinkering needs to be done. We are under pressure. The XUV team has to succeed. After years of work, the moment of truth has arrived. First time ever that an Indian design team completely, without any outside uh, uh, help, uh, had designed a vehicle. When he opened it, there was this look of, I guess, childish surprise. It had the features, it had the design, it had the power, it had the comfort, it had the overall ambience that looked right. That ugly duckling turned to this beautiful cheetah. My first question was that why is it that this vehicle, this SUV, uh, cannot be the highest selling SUV in the world? Because it had everything. In order for us to create the most perfect vehicle. Everything had to come together in the right manner. The way I designed the product, the, day, the way I designed the tooling, the way I buy the equipment, the way I put them together, and making sure that repeatedly I can get this perfection. Perfection is just the beginning. In the body shop, four robots are tasked with high precision welding, a critical step to refine the car's fit and finish. Anything going wrong here is a very big problem for us. The surfaces and contours of the car are measured in three dimensions, mapping its shape down to the micron. The team will report any imperfections that appear. Even if the smallest measurement is not met, we send the car back. The prototype passes and the XUV500 moves on. The styling and R&D team hands the baton over to the manufacturing team. Part by part, robots and welders piece the car together on the assembly line. The first global Indian-built SUV is almost a reality. The XUV's shape and finish has to be perfect, down to the millimeter. If you have a six millimeter gap, and the gap is uniform from the top of the door to the bottom of the door, it looks ugly. Even tiny door gaps are subject to scrutiny, down to the minute measure of four millimeter. that four millimeters drove every decision making in the design process. Another forward thinking what we did is in our paint shop, uh, we have got two systems, one is a two coat and one is a three coat. So that three coat line was never tested. And then we anticipated that uh, that can come in my way. The XUV's strong shoulder and crisp creases on the body side reflect light differently from day to night. A series of tests to ensure paint quality. We took about 10, 15 bodies uh, of this XUV and then uh, we started the three-coat paint shop. With painting finished, the team 
finally has its car. The XUV looks exactly like what the team had conceived. And as the light goes down, how the shadows start playing a more important part in the definition of the form. And that changes a certain aspect. And I would like to think that it makes it more aggressive, more beast-like. But this is only the beginning of this beast's journey. to design and build an Indian SUV, Mahindra took many risks. Now they're ready for their reward. The team thinks they have a winner on their hands. So when you look at uh, starting to do something that you've never done before, it's always a daunting task. You always start sweating. Uh, what happens? Because I won't know for five years whether we have succeeded or not. And by that time, you would have spent 1,000 crores uh, of uh, a company's money. And if you don't succeed, uh, being still a small company relatively uh, in the automotive space, if you don't succeed, it's going to be a fairly significant impact on the company. Coming off Chakan, MRV, setting up, etc., etc., at the same time planning for XUV, it all happened together. The car goes into production on a massive scale. The pressure is on. The manufacturing team must roll out the brand new XUV500 in a very short time span. And they can't lose sight of the cheetah inspired style. Yes, it is a risky proposition, but at the same time, if you're convinced, dream wild and then make it happen. Now, it's all about refinement the elements of the car that will bring a high-end feel to the customer experience. In Mahindra Research Valley, Chennai, the XUV undergoes tests to measure the amount of noise and vibrations generated by the many moving parts of the car. We do a complete mapping of noise on various seating positions on the car. If you have a loud car, then it gives a unrefined very immature development feeling, whereas a well-refined car, which is isolated from the road noises and the ambient noises when you are driving, including the engine noise, gives you a feel of the refinement of the car. So the customer gets a very refined feeling when you drive a car. Each day, the XUV inches closer towards the finish line. But there are still many hurdles to overcome. The door handle is a key point of contention. The design team had styled an unconventional outer handle, the likes of which had never been seen before. Now, they had to actually engineer it. A lot of work happened around it between styling, engineering, manufacturing and even uh, our suppliers. The debate rages on, but the styling team sticks to their guns. It fits the overall cheetah theme. To some, it even seems claw-like. We had many options on the drawing board when we did the handle. We had a really tough time taking a final decision on that. And finally, the debate was settled by saying, look, Let's do justice to the cheetah concept. And if this adds to that concept, let's take the risk and go ahead. Uh, in fact, we did consumer research on this aspect and the consumers loved it. The XUV500 project is still a risky investment, but it's a calculated risk. From the design of the car, the research and development, to the design of the factory itself, Everything along the chain has been thought out well in advance. Because we are designing a global vehicle that had to meet many different uh, safety standards around the world, the body design became very sophisticated. We had to use uh, high strength materials, 
uh, very tough materials that are, uh, so develop, manufacturing process had to be developed to handle these materials. So the manufacturing facility and the design went along with the product design. Everything seems to be running in perfect sync for the XUV500. Even the claw-like handle is working. With the final assembly, the XUV500 has fittings sourced from the best suppliers in the marketplace. It looks great, but it also has to meet global safety standards. During a crash test, the vehicle is exposed to extreme destructive forces in a controlled environment. The XUV team is testing an unknown entity. They've never done such a complex design before. Now they would see if their engineering worked. I was really nervous. It is a crucial part of product development to ensure high standards of build quality and passenger safety. The XUV fares very well in the crash test. Each time you wonder, uh, will you succeed, will you succeed? When the first car was uh, crashed, uh, uh, it was a wow. For the team, it's a big success. But XUV 500 isn't ready to hit the road yet. After passing the crucial crash test, the fully assembled XUV500 is ready for final testing. Crews inspect its headlights, brakes, and even give it a monsoon shower test. Years of work, from design, research, and development to engineering and marketing, have gone into this moment. The brand new XUV500 rolling off the assembly line. A final track test will assess its appeal to their real target, the customer. It's a business of passion and you don't succeed simply by engineering excellence or manufacturing excellence or marketing excellence. You, you succeed because of passion of people. XUV500 is finally ready to roll off the line and into the marketplace. From here, the XUV500 will take to the roads from Chakan Maharashtra to Italy, Europe. It's time for the world to meet the first Indian-built global SUV. And then you have a finished product. And you think it's great, you believe it's great, but you still have no clue whether anyone else is going to share that opinion. And I find that every time we create a new automobile, the sentiments are the same. So I knew that there was something unique happening. We were not privy to anything till about a week before the launch. There's an unveiling of the car, the lights dim, and then you know very quickly afterwards whether you have hit bullseye or not. They wanted to what you call deliver something which was truly world class with Indian ingenuity and that's what they did. And that is the wonderful part about this business that never fails to give you a rush of adrenaline. The XUV500 drives out into the world and the world's consumers love it. I mean, I have control of my car, I have control of the road, and uh, yeah. Actual driving experience itself is very refined. The engine is very silent, no noise filters through. The cabin is very plush, it makes it feel very sophisticated and very elegant. The car styling also catches attention. I think it looked really smart. So for me, uh, that was good enough. 
For the first time, an Indian car maker had designed, engineered and built an SUV that truly matched global standards. It had style, power, safety and the price was right. Mahindra had appealed to its customers' hearts, minds and wallets. We have had so much of difficulty in terms of meeting the demand even after 12 months of its launch. Demand is so strong, the company has to ramp up production to meet demand. With an engine capacity of 2179cc, the XUV500 has a brake horsepower of 140, a measure of the power of the engine. That translates to 103 kilowatt of power, enough to power the loudest of rock concerts. The car has a broad wheelbase of 2700 mm and stands at 1785 mm in height with a six-speed gearbox, disc brakes, independent suspension, a 70-litre fuel tank, a 5.6-metre turning radius. This large urban car accelerates from 0 to 100 km per hour in 12.5 seconds and can hit a maximum speed of 175 km per hour with plush interiors, six airbags, all-wheel drive and a navigation system, the car has top-end features on offer. The success of the XUV500 has been unmatched in the Indian automobile industry. Not only was it sold out for the first 12 months after its launch, it also bagged 22 awards during that time. It was the fastest to reach sales of over 50,000 for premium SUVs above 10 lakhs. For the pundits, critics and consumers alike, the first Indian-built global SUV was a hit. Yes, now, now we are there. Let's sort of uh, open the bubbly and see where we go from here. My wow moment came when I saw the first sketches. Five years ago, the XUV500 was just a drawing and a dream. But the long, bumpy road to production was well worth it. The car has crossed the finish line. The first Indian-built global SUV.